No, Cam back again. Delusion Dispeller. This is, let's go with how not to help an adult person that was abused as a child. First of all, when he's talking or she's talking, do not change the subject. They need to feel that they are going to have some measure of control over the topic that is at hand, especially if they bring up the topic. They want to be in control. Abuse victims are upset and traumatized because control is taken away from them. So it stands to reason if you interrupt them or you change the subject, that's not going to work very well for them. They're going to become upset or they're just going to close down and not talk to you at all. Do not tell them what they're thinking. Don't presume that you know what someone is thinking. I make this mistake a lot. <laughs> um, every guy that has been in my life has been a trauma victim of one kind or another. I do tend to attract those types of people. And I do tend to want to be the therapist and assume that I know what they are thinking. And some guys that didn't bother, but sometimes it does bother them. They feel that that's rude and intrusive and very presumptuous. So don't assume you know what he's thinking or she's thinking. Do not insinuate how they should feel. Do not say, well, you shouldn't feel that way. You shouldn't feel bad about that. Or you should be happy this didn't happen. Don't tell people how they should feel, good or bad. It's rude and it's wrong and tactless. Let people feel how they feel. They can own those feelings. Those are their feelings. At the same time, they don't need to be projecting them onto you. You can be perfectly free to say, that's your feeling, that's not my feeling, and I don't have to have the same feeling you do. Do not interrogate them. What I mean by this is, usually when people think of an interrogation, it's where were you on the night of the 17th, <laughs> you know? That's not what I mean. I mean, do not ask them, like, excessive questions, like you're digging at them and picking them apart. Um, don't try to pry into their personal information. If they want to share it, let them share it at their own pace. Don't try to be the interrogator. It makes anybody feel uneasy, but especially someone that's already been traumatized. They don't need to be re-traumatized. Do not dare them. Do not say, I dare you to go confront your abuser. I dare you to go stick up to her. Don't do it. Don't tell them what to do. Well, what you need to do is go and talk to Mr. Smith and tell him that he should have never touched you that way. What you need to do is go confront your mother and you just tell her that she was just totally wrong and off base for what she did. Don't tell them what to do. Um... Don't also tell them why whatever happened couldn't have happened. Oh, well, don't you think you're exaggerating just a little bit? That could never have happened because your mother wasn't even at home that time. She was out working, so she couldn't have touched you in that way. Don't do that. Um, let's see. Don't agree with them about them taking an unsafe action. Like if they say, well... I know my dad has guns in the house, but I'm just going to march myself over there and I'm going to confront him and tell him what a pervert he was for doing what he did to me. Don't say, oh, that's a great idea. I think you should do that. I think that would be really empowering to you to go over there and confront your dad. It's unsafe. He's got guns. I mean, you know, don't do that. Um, do not reject them. Don't say, look, I don't even want to hear it. That is all you talk about is your abuse. I don't care. I don't want to hear about it. It's over and done with. Just leave it in the past. I don't want to hear it. Don't reject them. Do not give unsolicited approval, making them feel belittled or childish. Don't say to them, well, I'm really proud of you for that. I think that that's just great that you made such strides. Unless they ask you, do you think I'm doing better? Do you think that was a great, you know, move on my part? Do you think I'm making steps? Don't try to make them feel like little children. They don't need to be re-victimized. And putting somebody in a place where they feel belittled is going to re-victimize them. Okay, um, don't make unfair promises to them. 
that can be anything. Anything you promise them. Um, I promise I will never say his name again. I promise to never bring up that subject again. I promise to never make you do that again. You can't promise that stuff unless you really can follow through on it. They've had promises broken to them. So don't make promises you can't keep. Um, and don't, don't make them make promises to you that they can't keep either. And do not rush their process along. Everybody needs to go through this at their own pace. You cannot tell them, well, look, you got three weeks to change, three weeks to get over this, or six months to become a better person and stop swearing at me and stop being angry and stop using me as your scapegoat or I'm leaving. I mean, now, if they're being abusive, that's different. I'm talking about somebody that's just working through their issues and it's taking time. Let them have the process. If you need to move yourself out for a while while they're going through the process, that's okay too, if it's safe to do so. Do not act bored with them when they're sharing. Don't. When's it going to be done? I've heard this before. Uh-huh. Yeah. And then what happened? Oh, well, that must have been really upsetting. I can see why you'd feel that way. Yeah. Okay. Well, honey, it's getting kind of late. Can we, like, wrap this up a little bit? Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> That's really rude. Um, let's see. We're going to talk about what you should do. We already talked about enough of the don'ts. You got the idea, I think. Anyway, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for what you need to do to help them through this time. Thanks.